Ciao! Welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to keep looking at Glance, the new way to create widgets on your home screen using Jetpack Compose. In the previous video I left you with a widget that had few information on it, uh, as you can see now on the screen, but it didn't really have information that could be relevant to the user because all the information that we were displaying on the screen was hard-coded data from the widget class that creates the widget. Now it's time to get some real data from our application in order to display relevant information to the user from their home screen without the need to open their app. To add some data on our application, I created a database on our app using the room library. And also I started using Hilt for dependency injection in order to be able to retrieve instances of our classes that will interact with the database in a simpler way. As you can see from the screen, I added the library uh, into our app Gradle file using the room compile and the hilt and I declare the library here in the tom file as well as the version of what we need. I believe most of you are already familiar with hilt and room so I won't explain how to set up those library and how to start using them in this video but if you're not familiar with them and you would like me to cover them in a small tutorial video let me know down in the comment and i'll be sure to create a video tutorial for those libraries as well here on the screen here on the screen now i have a repository that accepts a dao which is part of our database and i will show it in a moment that allow us to under random note get all the nodes and delete a single node. A node is really a simple class that I created. He has a UUID, a title and the text that can be null. The DAO is what let us interact with the room database, which is a SQL-like database with Android. It exposes three query. One is to select everything from the list, from the all the nodes that are present in the database. One is an insert query and one is a delete query in order to insert and delete a single node. And this is just the definition of our database. As you can see, we only have that node class in our database and we only provide the nodes DAO in order to query the nodes in our database. This is a database module. This is part of Hilt. It provides an app database by building the database and also provides a nodes DAO in order for us to be able to inject an instance of the nodes DAO wherever we need. And as I've shown you before, the node repository has an instance injected in its constructor of the nodes DAO. Given the level of this project, I just created a main activity which display everything on the screen and I didn't create a view model which should use the node repository inside of the main activity. I marked the main activity as an Android entry point in order for Hilt to be able to give us an instance of the node repository that we marked with inject here inside the main activity class. With this in mind, we can then use the nodes repository to retrieve the data that we need. For example, in this at line 60 here, I create a variable which is nodes that get all the nodes and collect the flow as a state starting with an empty list. I also created a floating action button that creates a random node whenever it's clicked and it has just a default icon that has a NAD icon inside of it. For the body of our screen we just have a lazy column that displays all the nodes in order using the title of the node and also show an icon button which has a delete icon inside of it which is a red icon in order for us to delete the node with this in mind if we run our application we will see that we are presented with an empty screen and we can populate the database by adding nodes by clicking the floating action button but we can also delete all the nodes that we want by clicking the delete icon if we say add three icons and close our app and close our application 
Reopening it will display the three nodes because they are persisted in the database of the application. Now that we have a way to insert and delete data from our database, we can create a repository for our widget in order to query that data and display that data in the widget from the home screen. Following the example in the Glance tutorial on the official website of Android developers, we find that there isn't a way to use Hilt directly in order to inject uh, something into our repository for our widget. And we need to fall back to the default way of gathering an instance. We can define a class that is our Glance Tutorial Widget Repository that accepts the app context and also our notes DAO, which is what we will need to query the database. We need to create an entry point, define an interface, which is the interface entry point, that will provide us with a widget repository that is a, an instance of a class of our repository. Then what we need is a get function that accepts a context and using the entry points dot get function from Hilt, which is our dependency injection framework that requires the application content and a class returns an instance of our widget repository that we need from our widget. Here I created three functions for this repository. One is to notify all our widget that a node has been inserted in our database. One is the node deleted, which will notify all the widget that a node has been deleted from the database. And one is the load nodes, which basically returns all the nodes from the database as a flow of nodes with a distinct until change that will allow us to not receive updates until the database underneath has changed. With this done, we can move into our widget class and inside the provide glance function, that is what we need to use in order to define the interface the UI interface of our widget, we can now use the Glance Tutorial Widget Repository dot get function, sending the context that the provide Glance function receives in order to have an instance of our repository. With that, we can, as we did in the main activity, call the load nodes function and collect the flow as a state. Then what I did here is just display a column on the widget and for every node that we have in our database, display its title. Now, if we run our app and do some changes to our database, as you can see, we have two nodes here, but the widget displays four nodes and the ID of those nodes don't reflect the ones that we have in our app. This is because when the database is changed, as I'm doing it right now, this is not notifying our widget that some changes has, have happened. To solve this problem, as I showed you before, our widget repository exposes two functions that are not inserted and not deleted. Since we have our widget entry points that allow us to inject our widget repository wherever we need, we can go to our node repository the one we have before and the one that we are using from our main activity to perform query on our database and add an instance of our widget repository. With this widget repository, we can now notify the widgets that a node has been inserted or that a node has been deleted. With this in mind now, if we rerun our application, we can see that we have seven nodes here and if we go to our home screen and reposition our widget we will have all the nodes there already and here we are with these seven nodes if we go back to our app and let's say delete the second and what was the fourth and we background the app moving to the home screen, we see that the widget is updated immediately as soon as we perform action on our database. So if we empty all the nodes, the widget will become empty. If we go back to our app and add other nodes and again show the widget, it will show and update automatically as soon as we perform any action on our database. And that was what it 
is necessary to do in order for you to actually provide some useful information from your application to your widgets in order to avoid just showing random information that are, are coded into the widget class itself. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and until the next time, peace.